Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of a new zoo called Cedarbrook Park Zoo. We're embarking on this exciting new journey for a new spin on franchise mode, one that moves away from our usual zoo content. Our focus is actually going to be on realism and the kind that not only focuses on conservation, but touches on the idea of managing and operating a large zoo. Now, nestled in the heart of the UK, Cedarbrook Park Zoo has found its home on leased land from Cedarbrook Park where our mission is to create an education center for zoo enthusiasts. Now, I drew a lot of initial inspiration from Central Park Zoo in New York City, where I had the opportunity to visit them just recently. Our vision for Cedarbrook Park Zoo centers on a modern compact zoo. Now, given our city theme, it's only fitting that we set up and build around the idea of public transport, including a subway entrance that you're gonna see shortly. Of course, no zoo is complete without the addition of a small parking lot as well. Now, as is normal, we start all of our construction with a little framework for everything. This not only provides us with a visual reference point, but also lends shape to our vision. Now, I've used a lot of the stained timber pieces that you're going to see in this build, adjusting the color palette to give it a little bit of a warmer glow. Now, a larger source of inspiration for this entrance actually came from the blueprints for Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle, Washington. Their floor plan served as the base for this new project. And although I did adapt some aspects of the build to fit in with Planet Zoo, uh, it all worked out. Now, seeing as we are focusing on realism, I've incorporated also a gift shop within our entrance building. Of course, this is a normal feature to see in zoos around the globe, allowing guests to visit our gift shop as they exit. Now, knowing this and knowing that Planet Zoo doesn't really allow for entrances and exits, uh, we are going to have to work with what we have to make a functional design. Now, as you can see, we're working on our subway entrance. It's important that we have public transport being the focus point for uh, our arrivals to our zoo. Now, this makes sense because it is a city zoo, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It took a little bit of finagling to get where we wanted to, uh, but I'm very happy with how it fitted. And uh, we utilize a lot of concrete pieces to kind of create that tunnel entrance feel as you enter into the subway. Now, as any builder knows, your first build is never gonna be your final build. And that's okay. It's all about learning from your mistakes and improving with time. I've encountered moments where I have no inspiration to build, and it's remarkably easy to build yourself into a corner when planning isn't really front of mind. And we've seen that with Ottawa Zoo. While I don't mean to say that planning is something that you must do, I do believe it helps keep you focused on your inspiration. And to all the new builders who find themselves grappling with creative ideas, take a step back and reset. If you run into a wall and find that you're struggling to come up with a new build, take a look at some zoo blueprints, specifically habitats. Honestly, sometimes that's all you really need to do. And speaking from experience, even though the total build time was about six hours for this entire episode, it was across a few days. This stop and go approach helped me to keep engaged and allowed me to think back over the build in general, updating what I felt just maybe didn't quite fit right. Now, circling back to our build today, with the framework building set up, it was time for us to start working on the walls that will separate the zoo from the public. We started with a timber base piece and used some girders to act as the frame. Now I've planned for our build itself to consist a lot of this wood and black steel mixed in, and I've gone for a slat wall in this case, created using some wood beams to provide it a little bit of a more unique look. Now note to self here, always save each item as one piece for easier work in the future. With the wall in place, it was time for us to think about some additional sun cover for our guests. Now, to help provide that shade while our guests might be waiting for friends and family or just for those last minute shoppers from our gift shop, I really wanted to use the same theme from our walls. So I started off by creating a girder frame and filling it in with our wood beams. This actually continued that slat look from our walls, uh, which fit in really well. Now, I did notice that the girders did end up sticking out a little bit. So one change was using a plastic piece to kind of help hide those lines. And it ended up looking really good, so I emulated this across the majority of the rest of the build as well. I think it goes to show that not every build is going to be perfect initially, and it does take a little bit of extra work. Now, on to our gift shop. I wanted a bit of a unique and fun door, so I struggled a lot with the pieces included in the game, and I found that nothing really quite fit what I was looking for. I've always envisioned this big glass door that's propped open, allowing guests to come and go on their own time. So I decided to make my own door. Now, as this is such a large opening, I first ended up creating a window. This actually helped to break up the wall surface before I moved onto the door frame itself. Now to create this frame, I actually used a few glass pieces to act as the border for the door. 
And then of course I bordered it in the black plastic pieces, continuing that theme of wood and black metal. Now, once we had that framework uh, completed, it was time for us to move on to the door itself. Now, remembering our initial inspiration, which was to have these big open doors that were inviting our customers in, started off with some metal pieces to create the framework. Now, these doors are going to be propped open. They would only ever be closed at the end of the day uh, or during in climate weather to allow customers to freely enter and leave as much as they want. Now, as with every normal build, your first one never really survives. And we can see this. I started off with these glass pieces and found that there was a seam and I wasn't really happy with it. So I ended up trying to uh, take it apart and then rebuild. This also helped because I forgot to color the, the metal pieces. So it meant that I could recolor the pieces without having to worry about the glass and then found this better glass piece, a little bit thinner, and it actually was one solid piece and allowed us to create a more inviting door. Now, seeing as this gift shop does have two entrances as well, we end up did copying it over and called it a day for our uh, entrance to our gift shop. Now, our next step of the build was the roof. I wanted something a little bit unique and the roof pieces that existed just didn't sit well with me. So we went with the trusty plastic parts. This gave us a bit more freedom to build that shape that we really wanted. Initially, I was looking to have a gently sloped up roof, but decided to go with a flat roof with an angle at the end, creating uh, a second level. Now this helped to avoid having one flat roof and it also allowed in more natural light to flow into the gift shop. Now to support the raised portion of the roof, I initially had added in some glass wall pieces, but again, I wasn't too happy with the look and that's okay. It's all about finding new ways to build and have fun. So instead I went with a more custom roof using non-grid pieces to fit everything in place. I then swapped them all out for a third time before landing on what you see here, which is a complete glass top with some wood beams to act as supports and cover where the mismatch joints meet. In the end, we had a rather nice custom roof uh, for our guests to admire from afar. Once that was completed, I added in a skylight. Initially, I went with this pre-made skylight and I just really didn't enjoy it, so I opted to make my own. I wanted to give this a little bit of a fun angle to work with as well, so we placed it above the warehouse initially. I use more of our plastic pieces to act as the frame and provide a little bit of extra lift for the skylight itself, making it a little bit more interesting. I also opted to have the glass only on one side and add more black pieces at an angle to join everything together, creating this really weird triangle skylight. Now, thankfully, I did copy the skylight and replace the existing pre-made ones. I find that this just looks a lot better and I think it goes to show when you make your own things, they just feel a lot nicer. Very happy with how the build turned out in general. Now, returning back to our subway entrance, I pulled some more inspiration from New York City. Initially, I wanted something that would be a little bit more modern with a cover that would act as weather deterrent before I remembered that we're not in America, we're in the UK. So we started off with the glass wall barrier, separating the walkway from the stairs to our subway. Once this was complete, I also added a back retaining wall for the same reason. Once everything was formed, I began to create our awning. I used a few girder pieces as a framework helping to provide shape to the vision that I'd had. To hide those girder lines, I filled them with our black building blocks. In hindsight, probably could have built this without the girders at all. But you know what they say, hindsight is 2020. Once we had the frame in place, I added some glass roofing. This not only allows a lot of natural light to flow into the subway entrance, but it also keeps our modern theme going. Now learning from my lesson, I did not use girder pieces, but rather our black plastic rectangles to form the frames of the glass. Now, the final big feature for this build is, of course, a warehouse. What zoo is complete without some way to receive everything? And I wanted this to be a little bit more focused on realism. We may never see this, but everything comes together quite nicely. I started off with some pretty extreme terraforming, lowering the ground to create a ramp for some transport and delivery trucks to utilize with these new warehouse doors. It was after doing this that I realized that technically the ground didn't need to match the incline. As no one would be walking over here, we didn't have to worry about creating pathways and therefore worrying about where the ground sat. Knowing this, it actually helped to be a little bit more cavalier with the build. Not having to worry about terraforming is such a refreshing feeling. Now, I also added in a parking lot, as this would also double as our staff entrance for the park. Once this was all completed, it was time for us to start work on the warehouse doors. Initially, I went with this metal piece that kind of looked okay, again, bordering in black to keep with our prevailing theme that we have ongoing before deciding that this maybe just didn't quite look right. So taking a step back and returning later, I ended up using some thick metal beams to give the idea of a true roll-up warehouse door. 
Now, seeing the finished product, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It kind of gives it that idea of a real warehouse feel. Now, I skipped over a lot of the smaller details in this build, mostly as we use blueprints for a lot of the extras. But overall, I'm really happy with the start to our new franchise. I'll be honest, we had to do some interesting things with money to afford everything, but the payoff was well worth it in the end. Of course, we are going to have a live tour shortly that will kind of give a little bit more in depth with everything that we accomplished today. But I am happy to say, welcome to Cedarbrook Park Zoo. Welcome to Cedarbrook Park Zoo. I'm really happy with how this build turned out. You can already see there's quite a few things that we need to kind of discuss in this live tour. But first things first, if you're really happy with the content in today's episode, please feel free to subscribe. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job. And of course, leave your comments, tips, tricks, uh, or animals you would love to see in Cedarbrook Park Zoo. I think uh, we are going to definitely have quite a bit of work ahead of us. But first things first, let's address a few of the new additions. Right off the bat, we have this little green area mixed in with a lot of uh, Drin grass, some some other native uh, European stuff, but also these three trees. Now, the really cool idea behind this, this actually came from the discord, was that over time, these trees are going to grow and we're going to replace them with the bigger versions every few episodes. And this kind of symbolizes the growth of our zoo given time. So I'm really excited about that. But as we kind of continue through, you can see our path has really changed quite a bit. We've added in some more stones, kind of give it a little bit more of a unique, fun look, tried to make it as uh, uniform as possible, and we'll, uh, we'll work with what we have. First things first, though, is we have the stewards of the zoo wall. And the stewards of the wall, uh, zoo uh, wall is actually built with uh, a bunch of our Discord subscribers. And these people who have been consistent and vocal within the Discord, providing feedback, helping others, or just participating in builds and the challenge zoos, whatnot. So I'm really excited to say thank you so much to everybody who's on the stewards of the zoo wall for all of your help and work in, you know, creating a fun, unique community for us. Now, as we kind of continue on, we have our subway entrance. Things have changed a little bit. You're going to notice we've added in some banisters and got rid of the glass. I just felt that the glass didn't quite fit with the idea of a UK themed uh, zoo. I was focusing a lot on New York City and just didn't really uh, make sense in my eyes. Now you are gonna see there's a few, you know, little clips that are kind of uh, causing, you know, we have like little blocks sticking out. Uh, I will have to figure something out there, but I'm really happy with how this works. They kind of come up out of the subway uh, into the zoo proper. Now we have our zoo bus uh, bringing uh, our guests from afar uh, to our new zoo. And I'm really excited about this. I did download this from the workshop. I will be honest, a lot of the uh, extra details you're gonna see are from the workshop. Also like this uh, bus shelter, I'm really happy with it. Um, never thought of building a bus shelter like this. It's really cool. I did add this little uh, leaf mural right here to kind of give a little bit of extra color and give that zoo theme, but I'm really happy with that. And thanks to all the builders on the uh, Steam Workshop, and you know, wouldn't have been able to complete it without, without you guys. Now, as we kind of continue down, we do have these little weird planter boxes. We actually see this a lot in, I want to say the Edmonton Zoo, where they have um, some fun little planter boxes and stuff like that. Again, some more trees. Don't think these ones are going to grow with time. There's just not enough grass and dirt for them, you know, for the root systems to take hold. And then we also added quite a few lights. So even at night, we're going to be able to see uh, as we enter, uh, enter into our zoo. We do have our uh, washroom facilities. Initially, I'd wanted to create a male and female washroom and add in some doors and stuff like that. I just couldn't quite find a door that I like that kind of gave me that idea of a washroom. So we're going to go with it as is. But we did add some additional pieces at the top to hide the top of the washroom, give it a little bit more of a down to earth, uh, or realistic look. Now, as we kind of work our way around, we're going to head over to our tickets and tour center. So when you first arrive in the zoo, you're going to see the tickets and tours. You're going to come here, see some amazing tour opportunities, uh, some opportunities for you to invest in the zoo, become members, and of course, purchase your tickets before moving on into the zoo proper. I did add a few windows here, uh, some screens. I got to work on some uh, some fun little um, flare to add here. I'm really excited to kind of uh, to take that on and, and, and try to build that. 
Of course, we have our main entrance as well. Nothing too fancy. We use a lot, utilize these uh, regular turnstile entrances and uh, we go into the zoo proper. So we'll have our first exhibit. It's going to go right about there, drawing everybody in. So you're going to see something can't be too uh, too popular because of course we want to make sure that we don't have a flood of uh, guests just hanging out at the front of the zoo. Now, as we walk over here, we see our mural, our little symbol for Cedarbrook Park Zoo. Now, the way I kind of achieved this was utilizing a screen in the middle of the floor and then putting our logo on top of it. Thank you so much to Clayby for creating this logo. I think uh, he did a fantastic job. And I wonder if anybody can uh, catch the Easter egg within this little uh, this little logo. We did utilize some more plaster blocks colored the same to kind of create a little bit of a lift. So it's almost like you could walk on top of it and feel like you're walking on the uh, the logo of the zoo. Now we're going to head over to our Zootique. I'm really excited for the name uh, where you can see quite a bit of work was completed here. Now, the majority of this is, again, a few blueprints that I've kind of smashed together to create a, a fun, uh, nice um, entrance for our uh, zoo gift shop. So we have some hats, shirts, socks and and whatnot. We also have uh, some additional things. We have water bottles, we have lights and you know stones and whatnot. Some cloth if you want to pick it up, gifts ready to go. Uh, a little bit of a uh, food. So if you wanted to kind of uh, shop around and you know take it, have a snack, we have some apples and whatnot here. And then tons of plushies. Everybody loves a plushie. So we have uh, quite a few custom built plushies. Can't say I built them myself. I uh, would not be able to do so. Maybe one day though we'll we'll have that uh, we'll have that there. As you kind of continue over, we'll see more plushies on the other side. And then we see this little uh, stand. I love the idea of these stands where you see like magnets and whatnot on top of them and they'd spin around in a circle and stuff like that. I thought it was really cool. So I added that in here. We have some gift shop games. So if you wanted to do some puzzles and whatnot, you can come here, pick up some puzzles to go. Some lunch boxes for kids and some more shirts and whatnot to utilize. Oh. <laughs> we have some towels for those who want to, you know, go to the beach. We have some towels, more water bottles, some socks and whatnot as well. So quite a few things here, kind of creating a really unique and uh, fun little gift shop. Now, as we kind of go through, we're going to go into our staff entrance. So as we head through, we're entering into the warehouse. I again, I did not did not build any of this. This is all from the gift shop uh, from the gift shop. My goodness, from the workshop. And I got to say, this looks absolutely fantastic. There's quite a few things that we have up here. And the idea behind it is you would have a warehouse. This would be our way to deliver everything that we need to have delivered to the to the zoo, whether it's gift items, food, uh, medicine for our zoos, everything like that would come through this uh, this warehouse. So we do store everything here. And then we have two side rooms. The, fur the fur further one is just more of a guest. Uh, it's a, a break room for our employees so they can kind of go take a break over there. But as you head through here, we have a small office space. We have two computers set up with a billboard. It's a little messy, as would uh, most places be given time. You uh, are in a go, go, go environment. Things are not necessarily focused on cleanliness in this room, but we have our little office space. And then of course we have a few workstations. We have a workshop, a research center and our trade center. Now, of course, we do not expect our employees to lift everything by hand. So we also have a little Caterpillar forklift. This will allow us to unload everything from our uh, transport trucks that come through. You can see we actually even have a transport truck that's backed up ready to be unloaded. We just need to get a, an employee to uh, take a to take that away. But of course, we want to focus on health and safety and we want to make their lives as easy as possible. Now to help provide a little quiet area for our employees to kind of get out in the sun, we also built this little guest only or staff only area, which is just a bunch of couches. It's actually in a blocked off area so no, uh, so customers, uh, guests can't kind of come through here, but we can come out here, hang out, take a quick breather from the uh, the hub, the hustle and bustle of work and just uh, enjoy the nice uh, sun as it kind of beams down on us. Now, as we leave this little uh, hidden area, we're going to head out into the staff parking lot. Um, we're going to go through our little door. Lots of windows to let in more natural light, everything like that. So you can kind of see in. But again, this is going to be our guest or our staff parking area. Initially, we've uh, partitioned it off with a bunch of uh, fencing. Just uh, again, a safety precaution. We don't necessarily want guests uh, wandering into this area. Uh, but that being said, we are going to do some renovations. We're going to be removing a lot of this as we expand our parking lot and uh, build on a, a vet facility that will have to happen one day. 
As we walk through, we have our um, transport truck, again, something that was provided by the workshop. And of course, we can't have a large zoo without some refuse uh, disposal, so some garbage bins here, uh, ready to be picked up by the nearest uh, garbage truck on a weekly basis. So this is our Cedarbrook entrance. I'm really excited with what we've accomplished with this. And again, going for something that's much more stemmed in realism as opposed to just building fun zoos. I wanna make something that's gonna think, you know, feel like it's a real zoo that's breathing and living and everything like that. So I'm really excited to bring this to, to everybody on the channel. Of course, if you have any feedback or tips or tricks or things that you think I need to add in or that I forgot in the you know quest to create a realistic zoo, please let me know. I'm, uh, I'm always open to your feedback. Of course, we have quite a bit more to do. This is only the initial entrance. As we go through, we do have a set up another uh, turnstile. This just uh, ensures that guests uh, don't get into the uh, the zoo for free, but we have a whole courtyard that has uh, some work that we need to do. Um, gonna change this flooring, I think, in here. I have, a, I have a new idea for flooring and I'm really excited to try it out. Whether or not I can build it, that's another question. But of course, this is Cedar Brook Park Zoo. Again, the Zootique, our tickets and tours sign, our parking lot, our bus stop, our underground, because we are in the UK. It's called the underground, not the subway. Um, so I'm really happy with what we've accomplished here. Of course, and as you know, I mentioned earlier, if you have any feedback, let me know. Uh, of course, if you wanna subscribe, that would help me out. That let me know I'm doing a good job. But otherwise, ciao for now, everybody.